So many of you have been following the work at Cognitive Policy Works these last few years because you're supporters of George Lakoff and you're interested in seeing framing put into use in the political world. So I thought today that I would create this video to explain to you a little bit about how the work in framing has been developing and how it's beginning to be implemented in the political world through the perspective I've had in the last few years doing this kind of work. So for those of you who aren't familiar with framing, I recommend that you read Don't Think of an Elephant or Thinking Points by George Lakoff to start to get a, a flavor of what it is. But um, basically, uh, I'm going to assume for the sake of brevity today that you already understand what framing is. So basically, in the last few years, I have been working with a number of different organizations to implement framing strategies in communications, in campaigns, in organizational development contexts. And one of the challenges that has made this slower than, um, than you might have thought initially is that uh, framing is about changing the conceptual models that people have for understanding the, uh, the way that people think about different issues as well as how organizations approach those issues. And that means, um, since it's about conceptual models, it's about the ways that people understand things. And um, that goes much deeper than language. It goes deeper than the word choices that are used in, say, a press release or a political ad, and get all the way down to the level of the relationships between different people and ideas within organizations as well as with the general public. So over the last several years, there has been a growing interest uh, in the work of Lakoff, uh, you know, George Lakoff's work on political framing. And there's been a growing recognition among uh, executive level managers, that is, the people who direct campaigns and who direct communications. They direct uh, field operations within uh, unions, for example, to implement framing strategies in their work. And one of the big challenges has been that in order to do uh, framing work or to communicate deeply at a level of values in a way that resonates with people, there's a need to restructure the way that organizations work. And, um, you know, for example, um, in order to engage with the public in a different way, the uh, field operations staff at a union, which is the people that go out and organize people on the ground, has to collaborate differently with the communications department of the same union, and possibly with communications departments and unions of other um, compartment and uh, field operations of other organizations, other unions, other nonprofits, um, other political action committees, and other such groups. So the collaboration element has always been a challenge in getting framing and implemented. Well, last week, I participated in something uh, that I found really exciting. I, I was invited to the United Kingdom and to London to work with a group of development or organizations focusing on ad addressing global poverty that have been grappling with Lakoff's work on framing for about three years now in a really serious, focused way with the goal of creating a coalition that um, brings the, all those organizations together to address the deep cultural obstacles to, uh, to having the populace in the United Kingdom collaborating to try to solve global poverty. And one of the cultural obstacles is uh, the suite of, um, of pro-consumer values that align with self-interest and individualism and selfish or materialistic drives. And those get in the way of trying to promote more community-oriented, socially responsible values that are aligned with uh, the changes in global finance and with market economies uh, that perpetuate poverty around the world. So as we were coming together to talk about uh, the attempt to bring framing into their work, they uh, brought out a number of issues in their institutional settings that make it difficult for them to adopt framing. And that um, not that it stops them from doing it, but only that it goes more slowly and that it's more challenging than, uh, than it might at first seem. And so um, it's really exciting for me to see that the directors of uh, campaign departments and of communications departments and of fundraising departments within these different development organizations um, are coming together and having strategic conversations about creating a joint campaign 
to address mass consumerism in the public at large. So this is an example of a group that is taking framing very seriously and looking at the deep structural challenges within their own organizations and within their own sector to try to address the inherent contradictions that they found in the frames that they used in the past and the frames that they will need to move them closer to achieving their mission, which is to end poverty in the world. So, you know, this is a, an example where um, the discussion is about much more than language and is getting deeply into the experiences that people have within the public at large around issues of um, uh, inequality and injustice, issues around economic fairness, um, feelings people have about corporations and corporate governance, and feelings about co democracy, entrepreneurship, and empowerment. So quite a gambit of deep issues that uh, are all part of the effort to address global poverty. And um, you know, my role, of course, was to bring an understanding of cognitive science and the political mind to the discussion but also to help shape the understanding that the uh, people in the UK have about their place in the larger global movement, um, which is really um, this convergence that we're seeing across issues to bring about a global transformation, whether it's social justice or environmentalism or corporate governance and globalization. Uh, there is a growing presence, as we've seen in the Arab Spring, in the Occupy movement, even a few years ago, uh, we saw hints of it in the Obama campaign and go back further to the World Trade Organization protests in Seattle in 1999 and um, you know, the, uh, the loss of confidence that people had in the election system here in the U.S. after 2000 when uh, it was found that Al Gore actually won the popular vote, but the Supreme Court chose George Bush. Um, so in this setting of people seeing that there are bigger changes happening in the world, and recognizing that the attempts that they've made in the past to address the challenges have been too small, too limited, or in some cases, blind to the unintended consequences that they have. That the work on framing has now gone from talking about language, which was mainly about messaging and marketing, to a much deeper level of organizations around the world and I personally work now with them in the U.S., Canada, the United Kingdom, Germany, Australia, Spain, uh, and a few other countries. So I've, I've been kind of interacting internationally in this discussion that uh, they're now going into this operational mode of bringing framing into the very structure of campaigns and therefore into the structure of the organizations that run those campaigns to learn how to do things differently. So this is a little update for you that uh, the framing work that George Lakoff popularized a few years ago is moving forward. It's being combined with other discoveries in psychology and neuroscience, uh, anthropology, economics, and other fields. So, you know, the social psychology research done by Jonathan Haidt on um, moral foundations and political judgment, uh, that's being incorporated, and other, other discoveries like that as well. So the work on framing is moving forward. It's just difficult to do. And there's progress in various places around the world. And, um, and I'm an exemplar of the fact that there's also collaboration and open conversation happening across these different groups in different places around the world as we really try to figure out how to bring uh, the insights from cognitive science into an operational mode to drive systemic pro-social cultural change to address global problems. So I hope that you stay informed, you know, that you keep uh, uh, following what we're doing here at Cognitive Policy Works and that you, um, you know, contact us if there are ever any ways that we might be able to work together or uh, that we might be able to be of assistance in the things that you're working on. So that's just a quick update for you. Again, um, I'm Joe Brewer, the founder and the director of Cognitive Policy Works, and I'm really excited to be part of this movement. <laughs>